everyone welcome back to GK today i am mujhe sana and in this video we'll cover the current affairs before we move ahead let me inform you that these questions are part of our daily 20 mcq series 2022 in the gk today's android application so if you are looking for the text version of these questions and their explanations along with the interactive quiz you may consider joining our daily 20 mcq series in the gk today android application in this course in app you get daily 20 mcqs a fortnightly quiz a monthly revision document and also category wise revision ebooks that are optimized for reading on mobile you are also able to access all archives of questions from january 2020 onwards and let me tell you one more thing if you want the hindi version of this session you can refer to our former channel named as gk today the link has been given in the description box from where you can reach to so without taking much of your time let's get started good morning everyone welcome back to gk today and today we'll be discussing most important mcqs for 28th of january 2022 starting with very first question yogyata mobile phone application was launched by dash so the common services center has recently launched the yogyata mobile phone application and the aim is to provide vocational education and skill enhancement opportunities to the youth and other citizens in the rural areas okay so it includes the access to courses like cyber security then cad or 3d printing etc to increase employability and the training content is on a continuous learning mode and the courses are yearly subscription based okay now few days back we have seen that the sebi that is securities and exchanges board of india it has recently launched the sarthi mobile application which provide information about the security markets so it will explain about the mutual funds its working trading and settlements then it will talk about kyc process etc okay and also the application includes the grievance redressal mechanism and this was done as the number of individual investors that are entering the market is continuously increasing so basic aim is to help these individual investors and also the new investors are using smartphone these days to do the trading thus they are being assisted through this mobile application okay only thing you have to remember is this mobile application belongs to sebi also we have seen that urjit patel who served as the 24th governor of rbi recently he has been appointed as the vice president of asian infrastructure investment bank okay headquarter lies in beijing china now apart from all these things few days back we have seen that rbi has recently included airtel payments bank in the second schedule of rbi act 1934 do you remember that hdfc icici bank and sbi are to remain as dsib what is this domestic systematically important bank okay so a bank has to fulfill certain criteria to include itself in the second schedule of rbi act 1934 so what are these criteria first of all the dtl means demand and time liabilities should not be less than 750 crore rupees and here we are talking continuously for one year okay so dtl basically tells the amount that has been collected through deposits okay the second is crar that is capital to risk weighted asset ratio it should be at least 12% so this is basically used to protect the depositors then gross npa that is non performing asset should be less than 5% and the fourth criteria is the bank should comply with statutory liquidity ratio and cash reserve ratio okay so not very relevant i'm just telling for your knowledge okay now you have to tell me who is the current chairman of sebi question number 2 which state or union territory launched india's first district good governance index many times we have talked about it india's first ever district good governance index was released in the union territory of jammu and kashmir so in the composite ranking of the index the jammu district tops the list and it was followed by the districts of doda then samba pulwama and shrinagar okay so this index is a kind of framework document which assesses the performance under 10 governance sectors with total of 58 indicators okay now few days back 
Central government has issued the Good Governance Index for 2021 and the index has been prepared by the Department of Administrative Reforms and Public Grievances. So do remember that Gujarat, Maharashtra and Goa have topped this particular list. And talking about Northeastern category, Mizoram has topped it. Basically, it performed very well in commerce and industry, healthcare, public health, human resource development and economic governance. And talking about union territory, Delhi emerged as the best among all the union territories. Okay. Also, we have seen that according to World Anti-Doping Agency, India is now among top three of world's biggest doping violators. Okay. So top five countries are first is Russia, then Italy, then India. After that, Brazil and last is Iran. So these are the top five countries that have violated the most. Now, apart from all these things, Niti Aayog has recently released its fourth health index. So do remember that Kerala has emerged as the top performer with respect to overall health performance among the larger states. On the other hand, Uttar Pradesh has been ranked at last. Okay. So top five states in this are first is Kerala, then Tamil Nadu, after that Telangana, then Andhra Pradesh and then Maharashtra. Okay. And the bottom three are UP, Bihar and Madhya Pradesh. Okay. Now recently we have seen that the government has released the Atal ranking of institutions. And you have to tell me who was at the top position. Please write your answers in the comment section. Question number three, Submission on Agricultural Mechanization is a scheme of which Union Ministry? So Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare launched a submission on agricultural mechanization in 2014-15. to Why? To increase the reach of farm mechanization to small and marginal farmers. And also to the regions where farm power availability is extremely low. Okay. So as per the recent guidelines of this scheme, a grant of up to 100% of the cost of agriculture drone or you can say 10 lakh rupees is provided for the purchase of drones by the Farm Machinery Training and Testing Institute, Indian Council of Agricultural Research Institute, KVKs and State Agricultural Universities for the demonstrations of this technology to the farmer's field. Okay. So basically FPOs can get up to 75% of the cost of agricultural drone and this is a scheme of Ministry of Agriculture and Farmer Welfare. Okay. Now apart from it, Spices Board is a regulatory and export promotion agency of spices and it works under the aegis of Ministry of Commerce and Industry. Headquarter lies in Kochi, Kerala. So recently this board has launched the country's first virtual platform for the spice exports named as Spice Exchange India. So basically India exports 225 different spices and spices products to more than 180 countries and it is a 3D virtual platform which aims to connect India's spice exporters with buyers from around the world using the artificial intelligence. Now earlier we have seen that Union Cabinet has approved the extension of National Commission for Safai Karmacharis for three more years with the effect from 1st of April 2022 and it is a body under the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment. Now apart from all these things, Cabinet has approved the decision of the government to infuse 1500 crore rupees in the Indian Renewable Energy Development Agency Limited which will raise its lending capacity to 12,000 rupees. So this is a mini Ratna Government of India Enterprise under the administrative control of Ministry of New and Renewable Energy. Okay. Question number four. Which country has declared a 90-day environmental emergency after a massive crude oil spill? So the government of Peru has declared a 90-day environmental emergency in damaged coastal territories after 6,000 barrels of crude oil spilled into the sea. So this incident occurred at the La Pampila refinery and the spill has caused death of marine wildlife and the spill is investigated as an environmental pollution crime. Then apart from it, as per the Chinese government data, India's bilateral trade with China has increased to 
43.3% in 2021. Despite India's measures to decrease the dependence on imports from China and increased emphasis on self-reliance. So basically India's imports from China has increased to 97.5 billion dollars in the year 2021. Okay. Then also we have seen that the Central Bank of Russia has proposed recently to crack down the cryptocurrencies because of instability in the financial system and also there was a kind of bubble formation there and also for the well-being of citizens. Then also we have seen that India and Denmark have agreed to initiate joint research and development on the green fuels including the green hydrogen. So this was signed as a part of already adopted the Green Strategic Partnership Action Plan 2022-2025. Okay. Question number 5. When is the National Girl Child Day celebrated in India? So India celebrates the National Girl Child Day on 24th of January every year and it is an initiative undertaken by the Ministry of Women and Child Development. Why? Obviously to create awareness and provide opportunities to the girls of India. So the government of India in 2008 declared this day to be celebrated as the National Girl Child Day every year. Okay. Now apart from it, International Day of Education is annually celebrated on 24th of January and this year the theme was changing course, transforming education. Theme is quite important. Okay. So United Nations General Assembly in the year 2018 proclaimed the celebration of this day and India celebrates National Education Day on 11th of November to mark the birth anniversary of India's first education minister, Maulana Abul Kalam Azad. So these are the two different days. Do not get confused. Okay. Now you have to tell me when do we celebrate National Hindi Day and when is the World Hindi Day celebrated? Please write your answers in the comments. Now apart from it, the National Voters Day is celebrated on 25th of January every year and the day is celebrated to increase the enrollment of new voters in the country and the theme for this year was making elections inclusive, accessible and participative. Okay. Also on the same day that is on 25th of January we celebrate National Tourism Day and the theme for this year was rural and community centric tourism. Okay. Then data privacy day is observed on 28th of January every year and objective is to spread awareness on privacy. Fine. Question number 6. Which Indian badminton player won the women's singles title at the Sayed Modi International Tournament? So India ace badminton player PV Sindhu won this tournament and she has defeated Malvika Bansot. And the men's singles final of this event was declared as no match. Why? Because one of the finalists was declared COVID positive. Okay. Now one of the interesting news is Smriti Mandhana has recently won ICC Women Cricketer of the Year 2021. And she is the second woman player to win this award in whole world. Do remember that Alizy Perry was the first woman player to win this award. Okay. And she belonged to Australia. Now do remember that the 73rd Grandmaster of India is Bharat. Sabramanyam from Tamil Nadu. Then 72nd Grandmaster is Mitrabha Guha from West Bengal. 71st Grandmaster of India is Sankal Gupta from Maharashtra. And the 70th Grandmaster is Raja Ritvik from Telangana. At least you have to remember these four. Then the 2021 World Rapid Championship was organized at Warsaw in Poland in the month of December. And Grandmaster Nodir Bek Abdu Satarov from the country Uzbekistan has won the championship and in this Alexandrovic from Russia was at the second place and Magnus Carlsen was at the third place. Magnus Carlsen belonged to Norway. Okay. Now we celebrate International Chess Day on 20th of July. So you have to tell me that recently who became 11th Indian baller to claim 200 wickets in the test cricket in just 55 test matches. Please answer me in the comments. Question number 7. Online Safety Act and E-Safety Commissioner are associated with which country? 
So Australia's Online Safety Act, which was passed in July 2021, has come into effect recently and it allows the adults to report cases of online bullying in the country to the e-safety commissioner. So this act empowers the e-safety commissioner to order the social media websites to take down the content that are related to the bullying against Australian adults within 24 hours and impose fines if not followed. Okay. So this act addresses the bullying against adults as well as children. Okay. So correct answer is Australia. Now talking about Australia, do remember that Brisbane city from Australia will be the host of 2032 Olympics. And also it is the third Australian city to host the games after Sydney in the year 2000 and Melbourne in the year 1956. Also recently, Australia has signed an agreement with USA and UK to allow the exchange of sensitive naval nuclear propulsion information between their nations. And this three-way deal gives Australia US nuclear powered submarine technology. And this is the first agreement on the technology to be publicly signed since the three countries announced the formation of a defense alliance named as AUKUS. Okay. Question number eight, which state celebrates Subhash Chandra Bose's birth anniversary as Desh Nayak Devas? So last year, the center decided to celebrate Bose's birth anniversary as Parakram Devas and the West Bengal announced that the day would be observed as the Desh Nayak Devas. Okay. So answer is West Bengal. And the Prime Minister unveiled the hologram statue of Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose at India Gate until a grand statue of the freedom fighter will be installed. So this year is 125th birth anniversary of Netaji. Now West Bengal was also in news because recently the World Bank has approved a loan of around 1000 crore rupees for the West Bengal government. So the loan has been approved under the West Bengal Building State Capability for inclusive social protection operation and the loan is being given for several development projects related to the social security okay now do remember that india has emerged as the largest exporter of gherkins in the world these are actually the small cucumbers also called as baby pickles so india has exported around 1.2 lakh metric tons of this particular product with a value of 114 million dollars during April to October 2022-21. Okay. So do remember that India is the largest exporter of gherkins in the world. Question number 9. Which institution released the G20 People's Climate Vote 2021 report? So according to the G20 People's Climate Vote 2021 report, which was recently released by United Nations Development Program, around 67% of the youth in India consider the climate crisis as a global emergency. And the youth are also vocal about the need for urgent policy creation and a change. Whereas India has only about 58% adults who consider climate change as a global emergency. Because Indian adults are actually busy in Netflix or drama show or anything like that. So obviously there is a need to make ourselves aware. Now apart from it, Himachal Pradesh Chief Minister, Mr. Jairam Thakur has launched Apna Kangra application. Why? To help the tourist and boost the sale of local handicrafts by an e-marketing platform. Okay. So the aim of this application is to empower the rural women and provide job opportunities to the youth through tourism. So also it aims to enhance hospitality services such as hotels, homestays and transport. So you can be asked that which state launched the Apna Kangra application to boost sale of handicraft. Answer is Himachal Pradesh. Then apart from all these things, India's first state-of-the-art Para Badminton Academy with advanced equipment and facilities has been set up in Lucknow. And the center has been launched by Dronacharya Awardee and head national coach of Indian Para Badminton team, Mr. Gaurav Khanna. So it aims to improve India's medal prospects at the 2024 Para Olympics. Okay. You have to tell me, India has won how many medals at the 2020 Tokyo Para Olympics? Now coming to last question, which former Prime Minister was conferred with Netaji Award 2022 by the Netaji Research Bureau? So former Prime Minister of Japan, Shinzo Abe was conferred with the Netaji Award 2022 by the Netaji Research Bureau on the 125th birth anniversary of the freedom fighter Netaji Subhashchandra Bose. 
So Consul General of Japan Nakamura Yutaka received the honor on behalf of former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. Now apart from all these things, Padma Awards has recently been conferred on 119 recipients and the list comprises of 7 Padma Bhushan, 10 Padma Bhushan and 102 Padma Shri awardees. Do remember that Shinzo Abe has won the Padma Bhushan 2020 under the public affairs category. Then there is a village in Telangana named as Pochampalli. Recently it has backed the best world tourism village tagged by the United Nations World Tourism Organization. Okay. Also actress Hema Malni is the recipient of Indian Film Personality of the Year Award at the International Film Festival of India 2021. Can you tell me at which place this event was held? Please write your answers in the comments. Now let us start with today's quiz. Here on the slide you can see 5 questions which have been taken from the past 2-3 days current affairs. Pause the video and try to solve each of these questions and at the end of the lecture do not forget to share your scores in the comment section. So please be honest and do not cheat with yourself. So that's it for today. I hope you have liked the session. These were the important news and events from today and we will meet again tomorrow with some more important current affairs. Till then stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching and please do not forget to subscribe to GK Today. With this Meenu Zatsana signing off.